I went, whoa, set, release, set, release, set, release. And the multiple sets and releases is what keeps their head position good. If I use just one big set and release or pulled, it would cause their head to go up. We're gonna go through uh, some techniques here for stopping your horse that work really well for me. When we ask our horse to stop, I want you to visualize a brick wall, 10 foot tall, two foot wide, okay? It's a solid brick wall. If we were riding that horse straight to the brick wall at a walk, when, he, when his nose touched that brick wall straight on, he would instantly stop. Because as soon as he touched it, he could feel that it was a solid, immovable object, okay? He knows that instantly, okay? If we continued to urge him to go forward while pointing him at the brick wall, he could drop his nose and take another step forward and, and have, his, have his forehead flat against that brick wall, okay? If we continued to urge him forward with our feet, he really can't go forward, the brick wall is there, so about the only thing he can really do is back up, okay? Now, I really want you to, to, to have this concept etched in your mind because it's, it's critical. Um, we want to use our bit, in most cases, when we're stopping, the same way we would use that brick wall. Okay, the bit needs to feel immovable to the horse. It has to feel solid. To get that to happen, the way we use our hands and our body is, is critical. Okay, if I'm, if I'm wanting to stop and I'm sitting in this position here, my pelvis underneath me, my shoulders directly over my hips, Notice how my forearms are pretty much in line with the horse's mouth. My hands are in front of the saddle. So when it's time to stop the horse, I, the reins are anchored between my thumb and forefinger so I can take the slack out of the reins with my little finger as my elbow comes back to make contact with the horse's mouth. Once I make contact, I close my fingers and set the bit solid. Now, I'm not pulling the horse, the bit's just set solid, and he's backing off of it because he can feel that it's solid. If, if I need to take, take up more slack, say I take hold of the horse, set the bit solid, and he drops his nose and keeps going forward, if I need to, if I need to apply more pressure, I'll move my elbows back to apply that pressure and then set the bit solid. So I may initially apply maybe two pounds of pressure and set the bit solid. And if he stops, I give him the slack. If he doesn't stop with two pounds of pressure, my elbows come back as my forearms stay in line with his mouth and I might apply four pounds pressure. Okay, whatever it takes to get the job done. But I'm setting the bit solid. I, I wanna make it clear, I'm not pulling on his mouth, I'm taking several pounds of pressure and holding it there, holding it solid. If he pulls on me, like a lot of you are gonna have horses that aren't very well trained and they're going to uh, pull on you, try to pull you out of the saddle, try to pull your arms loose so they can get slack, okay? It's important that you have your butt tucked underneath you and your shoulders over your hips and your hands and arms in this position because in this position, if that horse pulls on you, all he's gonna do is pull you deeper into the saddle and you'll be able to maintain your brick wall, okay? If you are, if your back is arched and your butt out behind you, if he pulls on you, he's just gonna pull you forward out of the saddle. By the same token, if you're trying to set the brick wall with your hands down here with a straight arm, it's very easy for him to just Pull your hands forward, you've got no leverage here. Same thing if you're holding the reins up here by your throat or using your forearms to stop your horse. It's real easy for the horse 
to pull you off balance right there. And then he's, you know, he's, never, he's not gonna learn how to stop. So this body position of sitting down, setting the brick wall is critical, okay? Depending on the speed that we're going, we, we may stop the horse by setting the brick wall, giving him slack, setting the brick wall, giving him slack in a set, set, set type of motion. Just like when we, we were turning our horse around, we were doing the rain release, rain release. We'll a lot of times stop the horse the same way by using a series of set, release, set, release, set, release. And when I say set, I'm talking about set the bit solid, set the bit solid, set the brick wall, set the brick wall, set the brick wall, okay? Now this horse is resisting me a little bit. You see his mouth open up? So whenever your horse opens his mouth, he's not relaxing his jaw. He's, he, he's not as supple as he needs to be. He needs to be suppled up a little bit more. Cavison isn't necessary to tie his mouth shut. As soon as your horse is supple and giving, he'll no longer open his mouth. So, if we're walking along and I want to, if I want to have my horse bridle up or flex at the pole, I can use my hands passively with a little seesaw. I'm setting the bit left, right, left, right with a little seesaw and I'm keeping him going with my feet. When it's time to stop, I quit using my feet, set the bit solid, give him slack. Okay, if I want to back up, I set the bit solid again, I ask for motion with my feet. Now the bit, the brick wall is set solid in front of him, the only place he can go is backwards, okay? I'm not pulling him back, I'm simply setting the brick wall in front of him by setting the bit and then asking for motion with my feet. If that brick wall is set, he's forced to go back. So, let's trot our horse, ask him forward with our feet, Oh, good. So I just said, whoa, let my legs relax, set the brick wall, he hit the brakes, I give him slack. If he didn't stop, I would take hold of him again and back him up, bump him with my feet. Let him know that he should have, he should have stopped a little quicker, okay? Drive forward, oh, good. Again, I set the brick wall. As soon as he hit the brakes, I move my hands forward to give him slack. That's his reward for stopping. That's what gives him the incentive to get light and continue to stop well. If he didn't stop, again, I would shake his head down, left, right, left, right, set the brick wall solid, bump him with my feet to back him up quick, and I might even give him a little pull right there just to say, hey, you should have responded to that bit a little bit better. Trot him forward, hoop, oh, good. Okay, so that's basically how we get our horse to stop. If we were going at a faster speed, which we're gonna do a little later, I would go set, release, set, release. Okay, I used like three sets and releases right there Boom, boom, boom. Right there, I used three sets and releases to stop him. I turn with rain release, rain release, ask for the lope. Ooh. Good. And again, I used several sets and releases. I went, whoa, set, release, set, release, set, release. And the multiple sets and releases is what keeps their head position good. If I use just one big set and release or pulled, it would cause their head to go up. 